First up, let's start off with tier number five, Jank. In my opinion, a Jank Commander deck is a deck that has a purpose outside of winning. These kinds of decks want to tell a story, so they'll include specific cards that relate to that story. These cards might not synergize with each other, but that's not the purpose of the deck. Hello, spicy people of the internet. I am Spice 8 Rack, AKA the movie Chef. Uh, apologies about the hand. I got into a fight with a tripod. <laughs> And today I want to talk to you about my favourite format, Commander. Now this may work for Binging with Babish, but I think I need a little bit more isometric up in here. So I want to talk to you guys today about how I've gone about making a flavourful Commander deck, one where function can meet character in a way that's both fun to play with and fun to build. Now the commander I've chosen is Nikia of the Old Ways, a centaur druid aligned with the Grull clans that allows your lands to double their mana at the cost of not letting you cast non-creature spells. Now not much is known about Nikia's story, maybe we'll find a little bit more about that in the book, so the deck that I have built is one that reflects her ideals, her ideologies and her belief systems. Not sure why I threw that card away, let me just go pick that up. Also it bears saying that the entire deck list you're about to see can be found in the description below and the footage that began this video comes courtesy of The Commander's Quarters, a great channel with even greater production values that's putting out some fantastic content for any budget EDH brewers out there. They also have their own budget Nikia of the Old Ways EDH deck on their channel. I highly recommend you check them out. Now on with the rest of the video. Immediately we have a mechanical restriction which can inform some of our flavorful choices. Spells and enchantments are the trickery of the metropolitan liberal elite, planeswalkers are interlopers into lands that don't belong to them, artifacts are representations of modern consumerism that must be crushed, anything that isn't a creature isn't allowed. As such we have no non-creature spells, as well as no enchantment creatures, no artifact creatures, no creatures which transform into enchantments or planeswalkers, or Although we do have a couple of transforming cards in this deck that I'll get on to later. The other mechanical attribute is Nikia's Mirari-esque effect. Whilst this doesn't suggest too much in the way of her character other than her appreciation for and skill with calling mana from the land, it does push this deck in a more Timmy-esque direction with big creatures and massive mana sinks. I, again, I have no idea why I threw that card away, let me go grab that once more for god's sake. Now with her mechanics out of the way, let's move on to how Nikia is presented on other cards. We can see a lot of the confirmations of her anarcho-primitivistic beliefs on cards such as Stomping Grounds and Rust Scarab. Uh, we can also see on Rubble Belt Raiders a further anti-society sentiment but tied to a card which rewards aggressive behaviour. Skarg Goliath, we can see a desire to get away from laws, uh, laws on Ravnica being pretty synonymous with counter magic, and on Gift of Strength we can see a pretty clear anti-flying sentiment. And finally we have Nikia herself. On the surface her flavour text echoes a lot of the same sentiments as displayed on the other pieces of card, however it also suggests that not only society but the weak themselves ought to be trampled. All in all this gives us a pretty clear understanding of Nikia's motivations and trapping so let's get on with deck building. We can't build a commander deck without some cards so... Oh wow, wow would you look at that. Just Please ignore the fact that the vegetables are on the wrong side of the chopping board and I'm holding the knife in the- you know, It was a reshoot, okay? This was a reshoot gag. I actually ordered all of these from cardkingdom.com which I use whenever I need to buy magic cards in bulk. It works out a lot cheaper than buying them from most UK retailers, including shipping. And they always have the singles I want. Uh, this isn't sponsored by Card Kingdom, by the way. But it should be! Now, like any good dish, our deck needs to have a base, and I've tried to keep to a budget of less than £25, partly because Nikia doesn't seem much like a big spender, but mostly because I'm trying to save up enough money to move out of Pleasant Kenobi Shed. As such, we're staying basic, with 11 basic mountains and 18 basic forests. I've selected cards whose art depicts civilization being overtaken by the natural order of the world. Mountain 306 from Commander 2016 showcases a small town being engulfed by lava, and Forest 199 from Hour of Devastation depicts a trashed Amonkhet temple being reclaimed by vines and sand. Why didn't I pick any of the lands from War of the Spark? 
After all, they do show the city of Ravnica itself being destroyed. Well, yes, but in the most destructive forest art, we can also see an army of eternal warriors at various points throughout the scene. And whilst Domri has no issues siding with Bolas... And that worked out absolutely splendidly for you, didn't it, Domri? I can't imagine Nick is all about that life. Mountain 261, however, from War of the Spark, would make a great replacement for the mountains in this deck, although they were unavailable at the time of recording. For non-basic lands, we of course have Grill Turf, Grill Guildgate, as well as Forgotten Cave and Tranquil Thicket, Rugged Highlands, Kazandu Refuge, and one Vivid Crag, because I just happened to have one lying around. No Command Tower or cards like Forbidden Orchard, however, because the former is a structure of civilization and the latter seeks to control nature. I've also chosen to pop in a cheeky memorial to Unity. Being limited by budget and our anti-civility theme, card draw is needed as often as we can get it, and whilst a statue of Eladamri is maybe a bit too on the structural side for Nikia, the act of sacrificing it could be seen as tearing down the statue for personal gain. If you wanted to splash a little extra cash in this area, you could pick up Nikia's stomping grounds, a fetch land, a sheltered thicket, maybe even throne of the high city, provided you sacrifice it the moment you play it as a statement against the oppressive nature of human normative chairs. Moving on to creatures, cards like Endrace Forerunners, Rurik Thar, Grohl Rage Beast, and Ravager Worm are pretty easy inclusions both mechanically and flavor-wise, especially Forerunners seeing as it is a boar, as is a potentially slept on Grohl card in the form of Sunder Shaman, which hits for an eighth of your opponent's health, has pseudo evasion, and destroys artifacts and enchantments. The cheap and cheerful original Borborygmos would have made it into this deck too if he hadn't have been beaten into retirement by Domri, and if if you lose any form of physical competition to a twink, you automatically slip several rungs down the food chain. Ilharg the Raised Bull would also automatically go into this deck if it wasn't $15. However, we're not just limiting ourselves to cards with Grill watermarks, because otherwise we have some real slim picking, so cards like Stone Shock Giant, Grave Sifter, and Apocalypse Hydra all can go into this deck because they showcase symbols of society being absolutely murked. You also have Manglehorn, whose replacement effect for artifacts entering the battlefield plays on some of that nature fighting against law sentiment. Indric Stomp Howler, Acidic Slime, Reclamation Sage, and Polis Crusher all hit Nikia's hated card types and are either visually fighting against society or pretty categorically labelled as city stompers. Terastodon has the mechanical flavour of Beast Withining up to three symbols of society that aren't creatures, and Moulder Slug eats artefacts on an artefact world. I think that fits pretty nicely into the deck of someone who hates cities and lives on a city world. Also another creature from Mirrodin, Tornado Elemental hits flyers, and in its Commander 2015 art, it's on its way to put a serious hole in any and all planned civic picnics. If you fancied splashing a little extra cash in this section, cards like Bane of Progress or Path Breaker Ibex would make great additions, but I purposely avoided putting cheap cards like Decimator of Provinces in this deck, despite having pretty anti-civilization connotations and being a bore. As much as I imagine Nikia wants to end civilization, again, I doubt she'd be down with beings from beyond the stars doing her work for her. Domri, on the other hand, is a capitulating little sh**. With the main stock simmering, we can now start adding more complex flavours. It's all well and good hating and wanting to destroy society, but the Grull are made up of many people who, at one time or another, existed but then relinquished the grasp of society, and I wanted to represent those people here. Firstly, we have a slew of werewolf cards who represent this transition from civil to primal in a very literal way. Breakneck Rider and Instigator Gang can help attack through your opponent's hordes. Hermit of Nata Knowles and Sage of Ancient Lore punish other players for trying to keep you in check on your turn or for drawing cards. <coughs> Blue players <coughs> punishes... <coughs> Blue players. <coughs> Daybreak Ranger has decent anti-air creds as well as being an okay removal creature on her flip side and Dusk Watch Recruiter is a great mana sink for when you need card draw. I've also included one other transforming creature in the form of Baduka Gardener as a decent ramp card that casts aside the notion that nature can be tamed when he transforms. Other supposedly civil creatures include Kessig Cage Breakers who are all about that eco-terrorism lifestyle, Mulvawani Beast Tracker, Drum Hunter Fierce Empath, Voyaging Satyr, Arbor Elf, Lanawar Elves, and Wood Elves, who are shown to exist in nature without tainting it with civility. Like, 
Uh, well, I, I mean, not not this copy of Wood Elves. Like this copy of Wood Elves, they've they've built houses in the trees. Look, I I ordered the wrong version of Wood Elves. Just. Just let me have this, please! Now, two cards that I've included that bear further explanation are Magus of the Candelabra and Squallmonger. Both of these creatures utilize an element of society in some way. With Magus, it's the veneration of Tornos's artifacts. And with Squall, it's the implication that she'll do what you want for a price. Currency being a symbol of society. I think all those fish in the ocean deserve to die. With the former, I'd be inclined to focus more on the fact that the character depicted in this artwork is explicitly referred to as a nature mage and has reclaimed the candelabra with vines and with the latter because any player can activate her ability she represents the entry point for a lot of other planeswalkers you'll be battling against into the old ways very much in a similar way to feral hydras anyone can contribute to this nature boy's ability which is also in this deck now, I haven't included cards like Farhaven Elf, Ulvenwald Tracker, or Yeva because they're depicted owning animals, directing them, or having harnesses on them. Now, some of the animals affiliated with the Grull have harnesses, uh, such as Skargan and Hellkite, but I imagine that provided it's the Grull themselves doing it, Nikya would be fine with it. It's like authoritarianism. It's never good, unless I was in charge. I'd do it right! And if you wanted to splash a wee bit more cash whilst remaining faithful to the flavour of this deck, Sakura Tribe Elder, Fauna Shaman and Ravager of the Fells would be perfect inclusions in this deck. As would Mondronin Shaman. But... But I forgot to order it, so... So that's why it's not in the deck list. That... That's, that's literally the only reason. That brings us onto the main star of the deck, the delicious slow-cooked jackfruit of flavour. It's all well and good destroying society, but what are we returning to? What world does Nikia want? Where does she want to go? Simple. Thought Park. Just south of Slough and north of Woking, now with 30 exhilarating rides featuring Saw, The Ride and Darren Brown's Ghost Train. Order your Thought Park season pass today for just £55. Hashtag sponsored content. Hashtag ad. Hashtag I'm a soulless lackey for capitalism and it kills nature is of course what Nikia wants to return to. And we can include cards which give us card advantage whilst also showcasing the unfettered natural state of things like Soul of the Harvest, Uvenwald Observer, Regal Force, Deadwood Treefolk, Palaka Worm, Garrick's Horde, and Garrick's Pack Leader. All cards that you can pick up for less than a quid, and most of them you may already have in your collection. Also, I am making an exception for animals that are implied to be owned by Garrick, because A, no harnesses, B, Garrick pretty much is the epitome of anti-civilization, and C, they're really good cheap cards and I need more card draw, god Damn it, also that really hurt my hand when I did that. Cards like Brutalizer Exarch, Paleloth, Spellbreaker Behemoth and Skull Mulcher all fit into the survival of the fittest theme, either only by triggering for large enough creatures, eating smaller ones for gains, or by being part of Vorinclex's vicious swarm. Whilst this technically makes Brutalizer Exarch an invader to the natural way of Mirrodin, all Phyrexians are still born out of the plane itself, and fighting against the natural order of Mirrodin means fighting against an artifact-centered society. Volinclex also believes in a totalitarian precept of survival of the fittest, which I think Nikia would be super into if it wasn't for those, you know, arm, arm gaps? What do you call those? Oh god, they're horrid. Moving on, we have Molten Primordial, Magmatic Force, Fertilid, and Brawn, representing the primal forces of nature and giving us ramp, targeted removal, and other benefits. Silklash Spider, Cloud, Thresher, and Arbor Colossus also fulfill the roles of symbols of nature that have strong anti-flying kudos. Cloud Thresher also has Flash, which I guarantee will catch people off guard, as nobody expects the Grawl Zoo deck to be able to play cards at instant speed. This also would have been where I put one copy of Great Oak Guardian, however, some absolutely callous chud bought them all out and now they cost like $7 each for some goddamn reason. Emissary of Grudges and Detritivore may not be 100% free-range nature boys, however, 
However, they do go that little bit extra way to destroy those symbols of societies being non-basic lands and instants and sorceries. Prowling Serpapod would also be a phenomenal fit here, however it is just over £2 which is too expensive for the budget of this deck. How about we showcase the awesome power of nature with Savageborn, with Genesis, with Hungering, and with Mistcutter Hydra, all massive but equally budget creatures that you can sink a lot of that Nikia mana into, and then Rampaging Baloths. If you know anything about the Baloths on Zendikar, they absolutely love to Rampage. We also have Kroos and Tusker, who's a... That can help fix your mana. Verdant Sun's avatar is a primordial avatar of nature that will gain you a non-insignificant amount of life, and Zertar Ancient acts like a replacement Nikia in a pinch, which, much like Squallmonger and Feral Hydra, can show your opponents the benefits of utilising the power of the natural world. But that's not where the flavour ends, we need to protect our new deck. Now a Grill Mage would probably sleeve their deck using discarded furs or wattled leaves, but I couldn't find any literal garbage lying around that would fit my cards, so I used Ultra Pro instead. Also, just as a PSA, I didn't know this before sleeving the deck, but the plastic Ultra Pro uses on their Deck Protector registered trademark sleeves is so thin that not only can you tell when a card in this sleeve is a flip card, but on many of the cards you can clearly make out the art and the subtype on it if you look hard enough. This is some frankly abominable quality. Now you may be wondering, well next step is a deck box, what kind of deck box are you using? And to that I'd say, a, a box, a manufactured cube, a symbol of human engineering, na 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 na. We're using what the Grawl would use, baby. Belt. Bloody belt. There we go, just gonna put that with them around there, there we, mm, there we go, ultimate guard, eat your heart out, slip that in, there we go, and there we have it. One perfectly flavourful and perfectly secure EDH deck ready for your commander to slip right into. I hope you guys enjoyed this vi- um, just, like, uh, slip that, slip there, is it? Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the spirit of indoctrinating these civilized folks into the way of the wild, I'll be giving this deck to one of my best friends who has yet to get into the game. But if you want to see more of this kind of video, maybe I'll do future giveaways, who knows? I will be getting back into the specific stories and worlds of Magic the Gathering after War of the Spark drops. I'm trying new stuff out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. I've only made 10 videos for this channel so far and I'm still finding my feet, but thank you all so much for supporting me on my silly endeavors this far. Uh, speaking of, stick around after the credits for an exciting announcement. Thank you all so much for liking these videos, for sharing them, for commenting on them. Uh, thank you also to my patrons, including Adam Gable, Jonathan Fisher, Joshua M. Stefan, Papa Titan 14, Sasha Evelyn Francis, Keezy Peasy, Sky Johnson, Stingray, Jabachi, Ryan Morgan, Chris DeVos, there are so many of you right now, good lord. Uh, Brian Berg, Mama Pose, Frederick Sass, Anthony Baker, Turhan Braish the Third. I hope I got that right, uh, Eldritch Eri, Shane Bior, and David Wasu Wang. And to everybody else who has donated any amount of money to my Patreon, it is overwhelming to have your support. Thank you all so much for helping make this channel happen. As for that exciting announcement, I'm going to be at Magic Fest in London from April 25th to April 27th. You mean 26th to 28th, you goddamn baboon? Hanging around, playing some drafts, playing some Commander with you guys. Uh, if you happen to be at that event, please do come and say hi. I've had a couple of people ask me to sign cards and I am 100% down for that. So please do come along. I'm going to be hanging out with some other wonderful creators like Jungle Fiverr, Digital Llama, Abby from Masters of Magic, and a bunch of other cool people. I hope to see some of you there, and as always, stay spicy.